media personality now, I guess, and most definitely a social activist, um, Jason Roberts, who is the founder of the Jason Roberts Foundation. Thank you, Gary. Um, hello, everybody. And I'd, first of all, I'd like to welcome you here to such a prestigious venue. I'd like to thank Steve O'Connell for organising this and supporting and sponsoring this event. I'd also like to thank Gary, whose expertise, knowledge, experience and positive thinking has been invaluable for the Foundation. And I would like to echo his thoughts around personal responsibility. Evidence of the partnership working, as Gary has mentioned and will go on to talk about, has found fantastic work not only from the staff and the Jason Roberts Foundation, but Active Communities Network and Crystal Palace FC Foundation, who have worked hard behind the scenes to make sure everything is running smoothly for today's event. And on a personal note, I'm very honoured to be standing here, and I wonder as I'm standing here addressing you guys, how many other footballers have been given the opportunity to stand here and talk to you. I'm getting used to being an ex-footballer now, and it's, it's no more prevalent than when people come up to me and say, can I have your autograph, or can I have a picture with you, and then they walk away and they say, thank you very much, Mr. Campbell. That means a lot to me. <laughs> Times like that, I'm really starting to understand that. It really is over. <laughs> City Hall is right in the heart of one of the world's most famous and well-known cities, London. But London is one of the most diverse, inclusive and culturally aware cities in the world. A perfect springboard for the launch today of our new accredited training course and curriculum, Breaking Barriers, Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Through Sport. We established the Jason Roberts Foundation in 2007 so I could return something back into the communities where I came from in Brent, Northwest London and Grenada, and to underpin my belief in equal opportunities, rights and representation for individuals regardless of background or circumstance. And since 2007 we have grown as a charity, but I remain as committed as ever to personally and professionally delivering our community commitment. And since my retirement from playing football professionally, I've been able to spend more time on my foundation work, strategic planning, reviewing our work and focus, and practicing what we preach. And we hope that today is evidence of that. Now, football, footballers are often accused of arrogance, and I don't know if having a charity named after yourself is going to help me in my counter-argument. But I have to tell you that at the heart of the Jason Roberts Foundation is me giving something back because I recognise how fortunate I've been to be in the position that I am. Sport has given me so much, and it's been a privilege to come from a famous sporting background. My uncle, my mum's brother, Cyril Regis, was one of the first black players to play for England, and he was an inspiration to our community and to wider society. My uncle David Regis, who sits over there, also his brother, was a professional footballer who's made his way from non-league right the way to the Premier League. And Otis Roberts, who's the CEO of the charity, also had a professional career. And I was lucky enough to have made my international debut for Grenada alongside him, where we won 12-0, and he didn't score. <laughs> my cousin, my mum's cousin actually, is John Regis, the Olympic runner. And my sister, Yasmin Regis, was one of the youngest people 50 years to represent England, Great Britain, I should say, um, in the triple jump. So, when I go back home, I can tell you I am probably the fifth best-looking sportsman in my family, probably the fourth best footballer, and when I got my MBE in 2012, I went home very proud, and I was obviously very, very...